Hey everyone, my name is Tom Froze. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about where ideas come from. How do you come up with ideas in your illustration? So get ready for that. This video is part of a series of ongoing videos about how to make a living as an illustrator where we just talk about some of the like just what are the, all the skills and things you need to know if you're going to actually be doing this for a living so that's that's kind of what this video is it's a continuation of that series anyway my name is tom froze i'm an illustrator and a top teacher on skillshare where i've helped tens of thousands of students unlock the world of commercial illustration and this this channel here is really just an extension of that where i like to give you guys insights and inspiration on being an illustrator and, and hopefully get you guys started and, and, and blasting through some of those big things that we get stuck on. I, as you can see, the beard is, is growing back, so I, I'm able to show my face again. And uh, I'm wearing a very dad hat right now because my hair is super greasy. Uh, I'm in a really bad habit of, of not really getting dressed all day until I go for my run, which is getting later and later in the day. Um, it's, it's almost 3.30 here and I still haven't done my run. So as always guys, if you like what you are seeing in this video, please give it a like. And if you think you might wanna see more of my content and of course know when new videos go up, hit that old subscribe button, you know the deal. Um, I hate asking for the likes and subscribes, but really guys, this is, this is how YouTube works and my videos will get seen more when you guys show me a bit of, a bit of love that way. Anyway, I always appreciate you guys uh, coming back and watching more and of course welcome to anyone new to uh, the channel. Just before we get into the content of the actual video, I just want to maybe give you guys a few updates. I've been continuing to blog every day, five days a week, uh, starting around eight every morning. I spend an hour, sometimes two, three, or like today I spent probably four hours writing on my blog. Uh, I don't write four hours worth of content every day, but that's how long it, I take just to generate ideas. And all this is about working out what my book for illustrators is going to be about. So if you want to know more about that, tomfroze.medium.com, uh, please check it out. Anyway, that's really all the news I have. Let's get into the content and I'll see you on the other side. One of the biggest questions for new illustrators is about ideas. Where do ideas come from? Before I started, I just assumed that designers and illustrators just came up with ideas out of nowhere. The ideas came instantaneously like a bolt of inspired lightning. And if they didn't come, artists would flounder about woefully until those ideas came. There's this popular misconception that Ideas are just like these kind of spirits floating around in the air, fully formed and ready to be used if you can just be lucky enough to catch one. This is such a load of hogwash, I'm surprised this misconception still exists. Before learning more about how ideas are found, I assumed that somehow you built up a sort of creative muscle that became good at kind of instantaneously capturing these ideas. Creativity kind of meant having this superpower of instant ideas. The whole point of going to art school was to learn the secret of obtaining this superpower. Again, this is just crap. So where do ideas come from? You've probably heard that genius is 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. I think we all know this at least a little bit. So how come we still believe the contrary? Maybe it's because artists want to uphold this perception that we are kind of the superhumans, that we're, we're more talented than everyone else, and it kind of sets us above other people, especially maybe those who would hire us. And this makes us feel more powerful and more profitable. Or maybe we just want to believe in the romantic notion of the creative genius. After all, when you look at your favorite work, whether fine art, design, or illustration, there's something transcendent and truly awe-inspiring about it. Every worthwhile work of art rightly hides its origin story, allowing its viewers to appreciate the beauty or message without being distracted by the laborious process that went into making it. Well, let's just talk a little bit about process, which I think is more reliable than inspiration. And that's kind of the key word right there, process. Ideas come through process. When you've developed a process as a professional artist, you rely on the process 
to guide you through each piece from start to finish. The process touches on all aspects of making art, from kicking things off with a creative brief, to initial research and brainstorming, to developing sketches, to making finishing touches on the piece, and even beyond that. The question then becomes, at which point in the process are ideas found? For me, the answer is not so much about where ideas are found as when. And for those who have a solid process, it's not a matter of if, but truly of when. In my commercial work, I have a very buttoned down process, meaning I have specific stages where I engage in very specific kinds of work and, and I have very specific objectives for each stage. I even have a mnemonic device that I use for it, bird's food. Okay, so you're like, what, bird's food? So if I turn the stages of my process into an acronym, the letters are B-R-D-S-F-D, bird's food. So these letters stand for the different stages of my creative process, like I said, and they're as follows. The brief, research and discovery, sketches, finals, and delivery. While the specifics of these steps is for a longer discussion, I wanna zoom in on that step in the messy middle, sketches. Sketches is when I find my ideas, or if, if you wanna put it in a different way, it's when I come up with ideas or discover them. If you ask where my ideas come from, the answer is in the sketches. Sketches are not the illustrations, but the means by which I develop the ideas for my illustrations. Once I have my big idea, the work is almost done. I just need to give it some clothes in the finished artwork. The job from there on in is largely technical. So the, the actual like creating of the illustration that people end up seeing, for me, that's a very technical exercise. The real creative work was done before that in this stage and talking about sketches. All of this really just leads us to uh, the most important question, which is what is an idea at all? When you ask where ideas come from, what exactly do you mean by ideas? Do you mean the more abstract concept or do you just mean the way it looks? I imagine that most people without thinking too deeply about it mean both. We see an amazing illustration and wonder at its very existence. How did someone know to make it look that way and not another? Why did they draw other people in that way? How did they come up with that style? How did they know what colors to use? How did they build up the image compositionally? Like how did they know where to put things? How did they know where to place everything? What about their techniques? Are the effects that they use and choose by accident or on purpose? How in control were they at each step toward building up the piece? It turns out that the notion of an idea is quite loaded. I suppose it depends on the piece in question, but when you look at most art, it's hard to separate the idea from the execution or the concept from the composition. For many, there's a strict separation between these two things, concept and composition. You've probably heard people say, concept is king. They kind of create this hierarchy of importance with concept above and composition below. This separation between mind and body is endemic to our culture and it manifests itself in every corner of our lives. Take for instance, our perception that a university education is superior to a college education. University is for the education of minds, while college is for learning those meager hands-on skills. While conceptualizing the ethereal separately from the material is of course helpful and a natural thing to do, it can also be taken too far. All this to say, it's possible to try too hard to parse a work of art into its conceptual and stylistic components. In my own work, style and concept work very tightly together. I used to believe that great designers and artists had a superpower of having a full vision in their head and just use technical mastery to put it onto the page. For me, the ideas start to take shape on the page in front of me. That's why I believe that when people talk about the idea of a given visual work, they're talking about both, the more abstract conceptual aspect and the more tangible aspect of execution, how the idea or message of the piece was expressed in, in visual or physical form. 
When people ask about where illustration ideas come from, they're probably asking how the artist knew to do it the way they did. When we're talking about the idea of an illustration, we're talking about both what it means and how the meaning is expressed. Now that we know what we mean by idea, I think we can now talk about where ideas come from, or more accurately, when they start to take shape. Referring back to my bird's food process, I have three areas of focus in the sketching stage. I call these the three C's, concept, content, and composition. Because I find it hard to separate ideas and execution, I find this triune model tremendously helpful. They all occur simultaneously. I can't say for sure if I'll come up with an idea first and then figure out what it will look like or the other way around. Concept is what the illustration is about or its message. This is sometimes what we call the big idea. Content is what will actually be represented in the illustration. These are the objects, figures, and symbols that will be used to embody the idea. Composition is how the content will be arranged on the page. Content and composition work together to convey the concept. Composition is largely an exercise of formal and symbolic relationships. By placing elements in a composition closer or further from one, one another, new meanings are made or more subtle nuances are suggested. While the three C's are tightly interwoven in a given work, there are specific skills that we can develop for each. Moreover, as we are pushing through in our sketches, aiming for our best ideas, it's helpful to understand these three things separately to identify these skills with as much precision as possible. If you've taken some of my Skillshare classes like Sweet Spots or Drawing Toward Illustration, I break down the steps I take in, to develop my ideas. In the first stage, the brief, my goal is to come out understanding what my job is. What problem am I being asked to solve and how can I use my art to help my client solve it? A brief states the purpose and objective of the illustration task. I don't know what the art will look like yet, but I know what it must do. That is essential for building up the three C's later on. Then from the brief, I move into research and discovery. At this stage, I of course do what I can to deepen my understanding of whatever it is I'm illustrating for. If it's for a story in a magazine, I read it a few times first to understand what the article is about and then start gleaning key ideas that might be worth visualizing. If I need to, I'll also supplement my understanding by reading more articles or watching some videos online. This preliminary research exercise is really the beginning of working out a concept. Then, still in the research and discovery stage, I start seeking out and gathering visual reference images. Anything really to help feed my imagination or fill in the blanks for which I have no internal reference for. To help internalize this new visual information, I begin sketching from these references. This leads me to talk about the difference between observational sketching versus ideational sketching. So this first stage of sketching more observationally from references is not officially sketching. Here, I have no goals of coming up with ideas, but simply downloading visual information to my mind, again, to help fill in any blanks in my internal repertoire of things I understand enough to draw. That's a confusing sentence. Basically what I'm doing is um, I, I can't remember every object in the world to draw from. So what I do is I just download images uh, from the internet, literally, like put them on my computer and then I'll draw those. I'll, I'll actually like just draw what I see and I'm not really thinking about what they mean so much, but it's just giving my brain some information that maybe my imagination forgot. And this will just help me later on fill in some blanks. So when I produced my class called Drawing Toward Illustration, starting from that time, I actually started naming this kind of drawing observational or O-mode sketching. O-mode drawing is the beginning of working out the second of the three C's content of my illustration. Once I feel I've done enough of this O-mode sketching, I then turn to the sketches proper. This is when I start to pursue ideas more deliberately. 
So properly speaking, in my process, sketching is the stage of the creative process where I use drawing to come up with my actual illustration ideas. Here, I'm working out the three C's in a very deliberate way. At this point, I understand what the illustration needs to communicate, like I know what the illustration's about. And having gone through some preliminary research in O-Mode sketches, I have some loose ideas of what I might include in my illustration to do so. Now it stands to just work these out on paper. Just as a writer has to start writing anything in order to develop their story or arguments, as an illustrator, I have to start by drawing anything that comes out. I don't know where things will go just yet, but I trust I have the raw information and it's just a matter of first making marks and then warming up a little bit and then eventually coming up with some actual ideas. The first few marks are often total nonsense. At this point, I need to stress that I don't have ideas in my head. I don't have a grand vision before I start drawing it. Again, I used to believe that great designers and artists had that superpower of having just a full vision in their head and just used technical mastery to put that on the page. Now, I can't say for sure that some artists don't have this ability, maybe they do. If you're such a person who has this uncanny talent, <laughs> I definitely need to hear from you. But for me, the ideas start to take shape on the page in front of me. I have a thought and I draw it on the page or through muscle memory, I start drawing perhaps the same old motifs in the same old mannerisms. By freely and uncritically sketching what comes to mind and hand while also holding in mind the overall objectives and subject matter of the job close, clues to ideas start to emerge. That's why I call this stage of sketching ideational or I-mode sketching. In O-mode or observational mode, I'm drawing from things that I see outside of my imagination, like in front of me in the real world, without too much pressure to come up with ideas. In I-mode, I'm drawing from things on the inside with the intention of coming up with ideas. It's somewhere in the sketching stage that composition starts to matter most. So concept is the message of the piece and content is the actual things being represented. Composition is how these things are arranged to create meaning and appropriate visual relationships. Of concept, content, and composition, I think composition is actually the least understood and the hardest to learn. If, if, if you can write and have original thoughts, you can come up with concepts. If you can draw reasonably well, or at least symbolically, you can come up with content for your illustration. For a lot of us, the sticking point is knowing how to put it all together in a single cohesive image. This is where I struggled the most to separate the three C's. In order to convey an idea in an illustration, you need to know what content to include and not include and how to arrange these. That's composition. Once you have a general conceptual direction as your guide, the real puzzle is really on content and composition. As far as content goes, how do you know what to include in an illustration? As you develop as an illustrator, you're constantly working out how you represent things visually. In many ways, this is part of developing a style. You're working out not only how you draw things in terms of shape and things like line quality, but you're also building up an internal vocabulary of symbols and motifs. Illustrators with defined styles will naturally have recurring themes that become signatures of their work. It might be in how they draw trees or include stripes or always incorporate squiggles or certain shapes. So in this sense, content does come from downloading visual information through observational or O-mode drawing. But over time, it starts to come from your own personal vocabulary of symbols. When you need to draw trees, for instance, you may not actually need to draw any particular tree, but just include the idea of trees in service to whatever the main point of your illustration is. So you have a notional symbol of a tree that you can bring to your illustrations when you need them. The same could be said for any other element of your work. Eventually, you have symbols for almost everything, and that is how your work begins to have a consistent style. But whether you have a consistent style, whether you draw the same tree every time, or whether you draw a new tree every time, 
you're making a decision of content. In this regard, every stroke matters. As a visual communicator, you develop your sense of what things mean, and you become more masterful at choosing your symbols. Similarly, you become more masterful at leaving other symbols or details out. Now, I know I'm still kind of circling around composition. I just want to make it clear how content is really about knowing which symbols will be most meaningful on a piece, and therefore knowing which ones to choose and which details to leave out. Content is the building blocks of composition. Composition, on the other hand, is the trickiest because it relies very much on intuition. How you arrange the things in space is not often based on sheer logic. Like many artistic skills, there's both theory and intuition. Intuition is harder to teach than theory, so of course we can discuss theory first. You may have heard of the principles of design. While people don't agree on the exact number and names of these principles, I usually stick to six in my classes. They include things like balance, scale, contrast, pattern, movement, or rhythm, emphasis, and unity. Whatever their names and however many there are, the purpose of these principles is to guide the artist in their compositions. A successful composition brings together its contents or elements in the most meaningful possible way. One tricky thing about composition when talking about illustration is that the rules you use in your own work will depend very much on your style. If your illustration looks more like traditional painting or drawing with more emphasis on realism and naturalism, your compositions may more closely imitate real life. Your compositions are more about telling a story through framing a scene and arranging the subjects according to what is most important. I think of the painting American Gothic by Grant Wood. The scene is a farm and the subject is the husband with the pitchfork and his wife. While the artist does take some liberties in the proportions, like the figures seem unnaturally elongated, there is nothing kind of surreal or unexpected otherwise. The people are clearly positioned in front of a farmhouse and, a, and an adjacent barn. You can easily imagine the artist having shot a photograph of this scene to use as their reference. On the other hand, if your illustration is more abstracted and symbolic, your compositions will seem more unexpected. When people ask me how I come up with my ideas, perhaps sometimes they're asking how I decided to create my pieces without regard to reality. While I certainly do not put myself on the same level of mastery as Grant Wood, the artist behind American Gothic, there may be more mystique in how I compose my symbols, not on a naturalistic plane, but in some more abstracted arrangement. Since contemporary illustration is more often in this more abstracted, stylized form, I think this is what beginners may be more eager to understand. When you're deconstructing ideas from the real world into simpler, abstracted forms, given there are quadrillion possible ways to do this, how do you decide on this or that one thing? I think it's safe to say that most contemporary illustration, which is not naturalistic or highly representational, is rooted more in design than in fine art. Whereas fine artists likely learn about drawing from observation and reality first, and then over time develop a way of using these, kind of developing these into a visual language for expressing ideas, designers learn things from the other end. We learn about things like composition in the abstract. We don't have to learn how to create a scene with a background and a foreground and think about all the characters acting therein. We start with elements like type, boxes, shapes, pre-existing images, and then learn how to compose these things in a hierarchy. It's more of a hierarchy of information, not a, in terms of characters or story. Everything is an exercise in leading eyes through content in the most favorable way. If it's a book, we have to create a hierarchy of different type styles and sizes to signal where chapters and sections start. If it's a giant advertisement in Times Square, we have to show one thing very clearly so the message can be zapped into the brains of passers-by in an instant. Of course, it has to look good too, but you can have a very pretty design that fails completely if the wrong compositional decisions are made. In the kind of illustration that I do, and frankly, I'm most drawn to, it's always this quick instantaneous read that I'm thinking about 
What is the illustration about? And how can I make this meaning as clear and compelling as possible? And so often I see the different elements of my illustration, the content, as abstracted forms. And just like a designer works with type, shapes, and pre-existing images, I arrange them on the page to produce meaning. This is how I work out my compositions. If you can find a way of achieving this repeatedly and reliably in your work, meaning you've, you've found a way of making these three C's work in harmony together, concept, content, and composition, you'll find success as an illustrator. You'll have pushed past the technical basics and you are now an artist. If you wanna learn more about composition, now is a great time to start researching and playing around with the principles of design. In my own classes, I tend to circle around these six principles, repetition, pattern, balance, grouping, contrast, and hierarchy. I elaborate on these in the five principles of design in my class sweet spots. And of course, there are countless resources on the web that really all point to these same things. Also, don't forget to look at examples of illustration and design in the real world more analytically. Aim to identify the various principles of design at play in the work that inspires you most. Next, you should feel free to imitate some of these approaches in your own work. Don't copy the work outright, especially if you're making work commercially, but you can learn so much about how to make an image work by deconstructing how someone else did it. So finally, circling back to the whole question of how to come up with ideas, I hope it's clear now how ideas come through work and not in strokes of instantaneous inspiration. Start with a creative brief, whether from yourself or from your client. Know what your job is, what the purpose of your art will be. If you don't set off with a purpose for your art, it's gonna be pretty hard to know whether your ideas are any good. Next, give yourself some time to absorb some conceptual and visual information by preliminary research and discovery. Don't forget to do some O-mode sketching at first, just to build up your in internal repertoire of visual content to work with later on from memory. At a certain point, you'll feel ready to start coming up with your actual ideas, and this is at the sketches stage. Sketches will often take as long or even longer than the actual finished illustration piece. The trick here is to start with quantity. Just keep putting things down on paper and quickly moving on when you get stuck. Allow yourself to get pulled into the ideas that seem most compelling or to abandon ones that seem like dead ends. Here, iteration is your friend. In drawing toward illustration, I identify iteration and its cousin, refinement, as the real secret to coming up with ideas. You really have to hammer out a lot of bad ideas to find the few good ones. Then, once you identify a promising idea, iterate and refine it until it becomes clearer and clearer. Depending on your style, how you compose your ideas in your sketches will look different. If you're a naturalistic illustrator, you'll be thinking mostly about what the scene is and where your actors or objects sit in relation to it in order to tell your story. If you're more conceptual and stylized like I am, you'll be thinking more about how to arrange symbols on the page using the principles of design, all toward delivering the big idea as clearly and compellingly as possible. You can learn all about the principles of design today. No special degree is required, it's a system that anyone can learn. The harder part will be in how you apply these in your own work, and that just takes practice. Nobody can teach you intuition. Only you can discover it by working it out in your work. So where will your ideas come from? It's not a matter of where, but when. Not in strokes of sheer brilliance, but the often messy middle of the illustration process. All right, guys, I hope you liked the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if these ideas um, about how to come up with ideas has helped you or if you have other techniques you have for coming up with ideas. I'd love to know. Let, me, let us all know in the discussion below. And um, yeah, I guess that's all I have for today. Family's home now, so I have to stop recording. And I, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Meantime, keep asking great questions and working them out in your work.